தள்ளி கொண்டு வந்து தவிர சலீம் Uh, Mr. Ibrahim, can you see the WhatsApp message? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, can you verify if possible? Yes, sir. Same group I'm sending it, huh? Ah, okay. I've shared in the group. Uh, one of the okay. Am I audible? Yes, yes, it's clear. Okay, okay, clear? Good. okay. good. That's good. So, dear all, we are going to start within another two, three minutes. There are many people who registered. So, that's the reason uh, we are going to take another two, three minutes time. Just please bear with us. Uh, now it is uh, already uh, seven four uh, means like as per the Indian time. Here in Kuwait it is a four thirty four p.m. In India it is a seven zero four p.m. Uh, just to give us another two three minutes time because about uh, uh, two hundred seventy people part, uh, registered for this program. So far uh, we have fifty plus people already joined, and uh, within another uh, three four minutes we are going to start. Please bear with us and uh, just be focused and get prepared. Thank you. Sorry, we can share the Zoom link in the other group and ask them to do.
your background is very interesting cyber map okay some people are chatting okay good uh, so just uh, rajasthan chennai uh, people from different places amen kuwait and uh, mashallah so quite good number of people are there from different places Sheikh uh, Sharif, are you ready? Yes, sir. Assalamualaikum. Ha, walaikum salam. Yes. My mute, my mute was uh, my mute okay. speaking was mute, sir. Yeah. Okay. No issue. No issue. Just be ready. Yes, sir. Yes. Kashif. Yes, sir. Ready. Yes, sir. Ha. Okay. Just we'll take another uh, one or two minutes and uh, take the permission of the sure, speaker. Sir. And sure. 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 Uh, so, what about you, uh, Dr. Ibrahim? Uh, yes, yes, yes. Are you? Uh, shall we start? Yeah, we can start. Maybe another. Day. Okay, sixty-five people are already there on board, and I think okay. people are joining now continuously. Okay. okay. You better to start. Yes. Okay, uh, Kashif, please go ahead. Assalamualaikum sir. Hope you are able to hear me. Uh, yes, uh, you are audible. Yeah. Uh, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. On behalf of AMP Association of Muslim Professionals, IT ET IT Experts Training, I would like to welcome our today's speaker, Dr. Muhammad Ibrahim, Senior Cyber Security Consultant, distinguished guests, participants, and students all over the world. And executive committee members of ITET and AMP. Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi barakatuh. Waalaikum assalam, rahmatullahi barakatuh. Myself, Syed Kashif Ali. I am the general secretary of AMP Kuwait chapter. Uh, we AMP are privileged to be associated with IT experts training. committee to organize this two hours free live workshop on how to stay safe online how to protect you and your children from cyber security criminals mashallah we have received around 300 registrations for this workshop which will sh- which is showing your interest in today's program with no further taking your time we start the session with khirat one of the verses of quran to have barka in our program i would like to call brother sheikh sharif for quran recitation brother sheikh sharif over to you brother sheikh sharif we need to unmute can you unmute guys he will come he will come just he is there and tavir has to give permission yes yes go ahead sir yes yes auzu billahi minash shaitanir rajim bismillahir rahmanir rahim والشمس وضحاها والقمر ذات لها والنهار ذات الله 
وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَغْشَاهَا وَالسَّمَاءِ وَمَا بَنَاهَا وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا تَحَاهَا وَنَفْسٍ وَمَا سَوَّاهَا فَأَلْهَمَهَا فُجُورَهَا وَتَقْوَاهَا قَدْ أَفْلَحَ مَنْ زَكَّاهَا وَقَدْ خَابَ مَنْ دَسَّاهَا كَذَّبَتْ ثَمُودُ بِتَقْوَاهَا إِذٍ بَعْشَ شِقَاهَا فقال لهم رسول الله ناقة الله واستقياها فكذبوه فاخروها فدمدم عليهم ربهم بذنبهم فسواها ولا يخافوا خباها صدق الله العظيم جزاك الله خير برادر شريف ناو اي لايك تو كال مستر محمد الدين ام كي اس President AMP Quaid chapter for presidential address and introduction about AMP. Mohideen Sabo to you. Yes, Jazakallah Khair, Mr. Kashif, and uh, uh, thanks, Mr. Sharif, for a wonderful uh, Quran recitation. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, and the speaker of the day, Mr. Uh, Muhammad Ibrahim, uh, my colleagues from Association of Muslim Professionals, and uh, the executive committee members of ITET experts and uh, participants from uh, the different places of the world i really honored to uh, speak with all of you today and that to on saturday evening normally people take uh, rest uh, but uh, i could see many participants as of now 74 participants are already there and many people are going to join and uh, we are really happy to see all of you uh, about 300 people already uh, registered for this program and i'm sure that uh, this is going to be a wonderful topic and uh, before we leave the floor to the speaker of the day i would like to take 2 3 minutes to introduce about uh, amp for the people those who are new to amp uh, basically i am uh, being the president of association of muslim professionals of kuwait chapter uh, like uh, honored to be part of this uh, wonderful team association of muslim professionals and it is registered in india usa uk and australia as a non profit organization uh, we have been serving the community for the last uh, 13 years alhamdulillah and uh, amp would like to uh, like uh, uh, bring uh, impact in the lives of about the 10 million people by 2030 so the mission of amp is basically to empower the underprivileged for the greater benefit of the society in general and uh, nation as a whole so uh, as you see on the screen amp's vision is basically to uh, develop a community which is uh, uh, advanced in the education socially progressive culturally vibrant politically influential and economically dynamic and um, like uh, during the last 13 years we have conducted a lot of programs alhamdulillah and you can see on the screen uh, about 2750 plus skill development lectures have been organized about 350 plus job fairs and job drives have been organized and uh, alhamdulillah about 800 plus uh, uh, scholarships uh, have been provided and about 750 plus orphans uh, were benefited uh, with uh, some again uh, uh, scholarship again and 250 plus families uh, again were given uh, support in this mission and uh, I, even uh, we are also trying to develop and convert amp as a resource center and we have a lot of counsel, counselors basically we are also now adding so many mentors uh, to amp and we also are recognizing a renowned and a, uh, very famous uh, educationalists and the professors and the teachers who are doing and contributing a lot to the community and so this is how we have been doing a lot of uh, activities about 100 plus chapters are there uh, and about uh, Uh, means the uh, 16 countries are also having a uh, amp uh, chapters and a lot of members are there and you also can go through the amp details like uh, uh, the website www.ampindia.org we are there to help you and guide you i request all of you to make use of uh, this wonderful platform for your better future and uh, now i also would like to take uh, another just two minutes uh, like you know uh, just one minute uh, like uh, to introduce the speaker uh, so without uh, <clears throat> now uh, like uh, the speaker of the day dr mohammad ibrahim is my colleague and uh, really uh, 
I am a passionate uh, follower of uh, Dr. Ibrahim, and uh, he is a senior uh, cybersecurity consultant, uh, having a uh, twenty plus years of experience uh, in the field of uh, networking, firewall, cybersecurity, uh, virtualization, cloud. I have been uh, basically uh, like uh, watching him. He is also associated associated with a lot of NGOs and uh, helping many students. Uh, uh, mashallah uh, means uh, like. Uh, 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 like uh, you know, uh, he has uh, worked in uh, many international uh, companies, and uh, uh, he has certificates like uh, CCIE and uh, CISM and uh, VCIX uh, NSC. And uh, the list is very big. I don't want to take much of your time. And uh, like you know, he worked in uh, uh, basically with the multiple international uh, companies like cybersecurity vendors and uh, Cisco, John, Juniper, Fortinet, uh, Palo Alto, FI. VMware and uh, Uber, IBM, Blue Card. So a lot of uh, issues are there under his uh, credit, uh, mashallah. And he visited uh, many countries uh, like uh, Germany, Italy, London, France, and uh, uh, Netherlands, Dubai, Abu Dhabi. Of course, he was uh, uh, there in Kuwait for uh, many years. And uh, apart from that, also he contributed uh, uh, a lot in uh, Sri Lanka, India, Malaysia, and uh, Singapore uh, through his uh, uh, like uh, my speeches, uh, whether they are through webinars or international conferences. And uh, really, uh, it's uh, wonderful to have such international speakers with us. And uh, you are lucky enough uh, to have such uh, uh, people uh, with us. And he is ready to help us. In fact, uh, this program is going to be um, a mind opening uh, program. And I would like to request all of you to focus. Uh, my, closely and stop, uh, like, you know, put your uh, um, all other business for the next uh, one and a half, two hours and listen to him carefully, take a, a note of all the points, whatever he's going to teach. Um, really, it is going to be a very good program. And with this, I would like to leave the floor to Dr. Muhammad Ibrahim. Uh, thank you, sir. Thanks for uh, giving us an opportunity. Uh, I, I really honored to uh, have you on board. Uh, thank you very much. And now the floor is yours. Dr. Ibrahim, please. Thank you, uh, Brother uh, Mohidi. Uh, Alhamdulillah, thanks for uh, uh, AMP team for organizing this uh, much needed uh, workshop. Uh, in fact, this workshop is just to create awareness. It's not uh, 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 theory or uh, webinar just to give some documents. Rather, we want to connect uh, through this webinar and address uh, what are the problems we are facing. Uh, as individual day to day on the internet. That is the objective of this uh, webinar. Um, so I would, as you recommended, uh, Brother Mahidin, I would uh, request all of you to pay attention because this is going to affect you, your children, and your family, and your friends and relatives. And if you can become someone uh, knowledgeable, knowledgeable uh, have this knowledge, that will definitely save someone uh, from all the problems happening in the cyber world. Uh, so that is the opening message I want to say and then start my uh, session. I think before I share my deck, I would like to know how many of you have shared one link in the, in the group. Have you seen that link? Yeah. So this is one of the program which I'm running um, for students because the most innocent and Easy victim for cyber criminals are students, all right, and, and children, and especially women, girls, because they are emotionally attached and they, they are easily, you know, can be trapped by the cyber criminals uh, with their tactics. So, the whole idea of this uh, webinar is to our uh, workshops to create awareness and how to protect our children, especially young girls and, and students uh, from this cyber criminals. We have organized a complete six days, you know, session, live session, focused on how to create cyber heroes from our children. You know, they would, they would learn what is cryptography. They will go in depth, not only just like that, they will, you know, even learn so many things about cyber world and they will learn through games because most of the problem we face today is we found our children are addicted with mobile phone, mobile phone, and they are playing, you know, some sort of game. 
any game it could be a normal game even they are connected to the online game and parents find very difficult to control that right so what if you convert that the interest uh, of your children from playing game for fun or you know getting addicted to that then learning uh, you know some concepts that's why now even education is getting into something called gamification of learning right so that's what we are going to address that's what is covered in that particular link you are seeing uh, i will introduce that at the end of the session about uh, the entire course where students can benefit okay let me uh, begin our session uh, with some kind of uh, sharing let me get to the back okay that's good okay i just want to ask all of you before we start this question start the session um do you think sitting uh, i'm sitting in chennai okay do you think i'm asking a simple question do you think i can know um about all of you where are you from and where you are connected and and uh, uh, what's your locations all those information do you think i can tag from sitting in somewhere you know just by um, you know sending a link or asking you to you know download a file uh, do you think i can uh, monitor and find out how many of you are going to say yes no yeah so i'm, I'm sitting in chennai and um, i want to know where are you you know how you are connected and are you using some devices maybe i may be knowing your location so if i'm going to tell you what type of device you are going you are using are you using a mobile with android or iphone and are you using for safari or chrome or mozilla to browse which isp you are connected uh, so if that kind of information if i'm going to reveal uh, by sitting remotely on online you know and then trying to reveal that information that so some kind of you know information uh, gather you know just how i am trying to gather your information sitting remotely so let me begin with that uh, with simple slide today i have connected with you and i have shared one link i think many of you have clicked to went to the website but what has happened incidentally you also shared most of your personal information like where are you from and where are you coming from which isp you are connected what is your ip address you know which location are you from chennai india kuwait you know i can keep on monitoring your uh, locations you know coming from different part of the world so that is something really amazing am i right so it's going to tell me somebody is saying from india bin bhiwan hyderabad who is connecting from hyderabad mumbai in a kuwait city surat let us take someone from surat and i want to tell him what he has used to connect with me okay so let us take that he is connected with the reliance but he is see here he is using samsung galaxy m12 <laughs> uh, is anyone using that uh, from surat someone is connected with the reliance jio is your isp can you admit uh, in the chat chat box yeah uh, you are using android 11 samsung galaxy m12 that's your device yeah uh, so so something which uh, it's easy um, because i did the international webinar i could see people from across and yeah i am in india someone admitted very good that's great so what what can happen is i can go and check uh, someone is connecting from bharati telecom someone is coming from i know that how many people have clicked and you know uh, where are you coming from you know different part of the world so that's that is the detail like in somebody is connected from uae from uh, you know emirates uh, integrated telecom uh, and i can go and check what he is using is ip address host name you know he is using lenovo cage who is that with the lenovo cage okay he is using a chrome mobile so that's something which is interesting this is ip address so sometimes even i can go and find out where use the location map i can know where are you connecting from which location you are connecting from 
So that is something which is really uh, amazing to track you. Uh, now I would like to ask you a question. How safe you are when you are connected to the internet? So that is the question I want to ask. Use the chat box, let it be you know, interactive. I don't want to bore with that. Sir, check from Bivanti. Yeah, Bivanti, I already told you. You are there, Bivanti. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we will talk about uh, your safe mechanism, what to do and how to be remain safe. That's fine. Uh, you know, but when I talk about you know sitting here and you are clicking a very uh, simple link, which is a real link, which is taking you to uh, my website, but I could collect most of the information, personal information, right? And I can go in advanced sticks. You know, I can get into that. I know. Even your location map, if something is enabled, I can go in deep. And if I could send a malware with the link which you have clicked, then I can also control your laptop or your mobile sitting from Chennai. That's the kind of world we are living in. I'm not talking about professionals who knows how to protect or maybe people who are uh, you know, working in IT and others. Um, Nevertheless, I'm talking about children who are enticed with such kind of links and advertisement. You know, they are more prone to such kind of attack or such kind of problem. So that is a great danger we are all encountering today, right? So let me get into that uh, course. Let me get into the workshop. Let us go one by one. So we will be seeing some of the uh, topics, explaining you. Uh, what are the challenges and how we can protect against such kind of attack? And definitely, we'll have a question and answer session where we can, uh, you know, elaborate more in detail. Okay. So once again, uh, I thank uh, Association of uh, Muslim Professionals for giving this opportunity to present uh, the workshop on how to remain safe online. I'm Dr. Muhammad Ibrahim. I'm very pleased to uh, run this uh, workshop. So what are we going to cover in this workshop? It's going to be a two hour session. Definitely uh, sometime when you, when you sit for more than half an hour in an online session, you get bored or you, you are not able to concentrate. But I'm confident and I will, uh, I can assure you that you will be attentive till the end of the program because it is about you. It is about how you are using internet and how to protect you from all the dangers which we are talking about. So many of the time I run two hours, three hours program, but the audience are alive and they are very much engaged till the end. So we are going to talk about what is the online information exposure and also we should know our enemies, am I right? How the cyber criminal works. So we'll talk about that. And then we'll talk about cyber bullying, mainly against uh, children and how to keep safe online. And also we'll do some of the parental control software because this course, this webinar, I've categorized for three different people. One is for students, parents, and teachers. So this is going to address everyone. If you are working in an institute or educational institution, Yes, this is going to help you how to help your students. If you are a parent, it's going to help you how to protect your children. If you are a student, it will help you how you know you should use online, what are the tactics you should use, how you should avoid, how you can prevent yourself from cyber bullying and other harassment used by cyber criminals. And also we'll talk about anatomy of hacking. It's like anatomy of a body, you know, how the hacking takes place different phases of hacking and uh, what kind of information, you know, the hacker steals at each point of a time. And then learn cybersecurity using online. This is something very interesting. I'm going to share a site uh, which is based on project-based learning. And it is mostly out of games. So you will go and learn using game, what is phishing attack? What is social engineering? What is malware? You know, what is ransomware? You know, you will learn everything through a game and this is done and given free of cost. That's something which is amazing. 
you can engage your children and they can score points like level 1 level 2 level 3 level 4 how they play their normal game you know anything they use with fortnite or any other games same way they can use um this game to learn cyber security concept and how to defend themselves okay and also we'll talk about online games what are the tricks you know when they are playing online games in social media and networking game what are the danger and how they are exposed and we'll talk about some of the real time hacking example we'll play some videos which will expose you how you are susceptible for uh, hackers attack with symbol social engineering or phishing that is what is going to be covered so please make sure that you attend till the end because if you miss any one of them that's what the hackers are you know, looking for an opportunity maybe you have to have this 360 degree protection for you from different type of attacks am i right yes i know about cyber bullying but what about uh, online game or about uh, you know um social engineering so we need to understand everything so let us pay attention and start this session with that so myself i have a mission to create 1 million cyber security professional around the globe i've created my own Uh, website personal blog ibcybersecuritymentor.com there are different type of people i am using one is focusing one is students uh, from 8th grade till the college students and other one is the working professional or people who are looking for a job or want to upgrade in their career in cybersecurity the third type of people is about parents and also normal it user who could be from uh, a company you could be in working in a hsc department you could be working in accounting finance you know manufacturing but it is touching your life every day so we have created a course called cyber security essential seven day course where you learn how to protect from phishing password backup ransomware associate engineering so such kind of things and also how to implement a cyber policy in your organization so this mentorship program is going to cover uh, all kind of people from students teachers parents working professionals and also executives and that's uh, the aim and we are developing the content and hopefully it will reach uh, millions of people to benefit in the future so let us begin this session do you know that 95% of teens are connected to the internet today because everybody obviously now they are forced before we can say we can say some kind of excuse that some people are connected some people are not connected but now everybody is forced to in use internet right because of online sessions and their assignments and their work and 80% of 85% of them are social media user and 65% of them teenagers have experience some sort of cyber bullying that's what i'm trying to address so out of 95% 65% is almost huge 70% of the people are teenagers who are using internet have experienced some kind of cyber bullying Okay, that is something which is dangerous. So the question, when I asked the question in the beginning, are you going to, uh, you know, are you feel safe in internet? Do you think you are, you know, secured in internet? Everybody said no. Am I right? People can easily um, connect, easily identify where you are, what you are doing, and then easily connect, take your information. So there is always a uh, in a social dilemma online exposure you know it's like exposed to radiation exposed to, to you know uh, ultraviolet waves exposed to sounds these are affecting our health uh, but right now the more impactful you know criteria impactful uh, element in the internet is online exposure especially social media exposure people are addicted to that they are addicted to this mobile phone every now and then they have to watch alert on whatsapp uh, facebook twitter and so on and so forth so why it's happening what is that happening around the globe so let us get a quick look at that so social media is something where right from facebook youtube uh, instagram um, uh, tiktok whatever you call you know people are trying to connect share ideas pictures videos and so on and so forth that is becoming very important right from governments to you know educational institution to medical uh, industry everybody is using uh, you know social media you name anything you know all are connected to this 
social media bandwagon, which is hitting very hard the entire internet community. So if you look at digital around the world in 2020, I'm just shared the one year before, uh, you know, data, there are more than 7.75 billion, you know, uh, population and out of them, 5.19 billion, and they are using mobile phones. And out of them, 4.5, almost 4.5 billion uh, have internet users, and out of that, active social media users are 3.8 billion. So if you talk about 8 billion, approximately, uh, the population, 4 billion users are using, not mobile phone, social media. There's almost 50 percent uh, of the person who are in the earth, you know, connected to social media. So that is something which is alarming. That means if I want to reach, convey something, you know, I'm going to use very easy mechanisms in social media. Right. But once you are connected with the social media, yes, it's used for good purpose. Government is using, education institute are using, you know, corporates are using, uh, enterprises are using. But what is the danger? What is the concern as individual, myself, you as a parent, uh, uh, children as a student, all of them have? Is the main thing is the leakage of personal information and data breach. Which what is data breach? Your data is available for you know uh, in the dark web for people to buy, and also hacking and fake profile, social tracking, cyber bullying, access to applications. These are the problems which we face. Right? Uh, we know the recent uh, incident where with the simple WhatsApp call, which is a social media tool, with the simple WhatsApp call. Uh, you know, they are able to install a malware and take all your information, not even sending something, simple WhatsApp video call. It can set a payload, install something, and I can watch what's there in your mobile phone. I can turn on your camera. I can spy. And there was a big news and it, the entire Indian parliament is, is getting, uh, you know, uh, this issue is getting big attention. That's something which all of you know about Pegasus. All right. So we cannot ignore, you know, we cannot ignore these concerns. So everybody has these concerns, right? So let us see how this entire ecosystem works, who is behind and how would we need to protect. There's a second step, but we need to know our enemy first, right? How do they do what they are, what's their intention so that we can protect ourselves. We can at least create awareness and, you know, try to help people, um, you know, not to become victim of such kind of uh, criminals. Okay, so we call it in ethical hacking or cybersecurity. Uh, there's a threat spectrum and that motive. The, the spread, threat spectrum is, you know, what kind of different threats based on the impact it can create. And that impact is also connected with the motives, all right? For example, hacktivism, we call it. You know, hacktivism is nothing but you know, they use computer network exploitation to their advantage for their political or social causes. Activism, people just come and do for social and political things. Crime is where people uh, hack or collect information or steal information online for making money. This is what most of the time happens. Cyber crime is something which is very common. Insiders is someone who could be working with me or who could be in my school he is my friend who was working, but he become enemy today, you know. So you are sitting with him in the classroom, sharing your notebook, sharing your mobile sometime, eating together. And all of a sudden, he, he become your you know, foe, from friend to foe. So what if he is, uh, uh, you know, uh, disgruntled uh, guy who is uh, uh, mad and who wants to, you know, uh, make uh, shame you and who want to bring you down and who want to make some kind of you know, um, 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 personal problem with you. So what he could do, he could use, before he used to directly attack you or send something. Now you can use internet, social media to attack. So there is someone who's called the insiders. Same thing happens in, in an office, am I right? We might have employees who, are, who sometimes we need to fight because they are uh, not ethical, they, they, they steal information or they are, uh, disruptive to the company. So sometimes we need to find, uh, you know, employers who are not uh, working as per the corporate policies or the procedures. But this employees, if they are someone who's an IT admin, 
or who is a security manager, imagine what could happen. So this also an exposure. So these are also expectant partners. So insider who are working with you, they can become any. So insiders and espionage. This is mainly done by governments and also sometimes you know state secrets and property information. Um, this is nation and state actors. You know, they use it for espionage. It's, it's like war. Am I right? They try to collect information to attack. We know that what happened in the U.S. election. There was a China is uh, you know, meddling with them. And also the other one is terrorism. There's all these things happening between, you know, for money, for some other thing, but terrorism is very dangerous because where they can go and sabotage the entire country's pipeline system. The recent attack, ransomware attack, has affected US, you know, pipeline system on gas and oil sector. Imagine that is very dangerous. Am I right? If they can come and cut down the power, power grid, it happened uh, almost six months back. If you go and search in Google, you find India had a cyber attack on the power system. Banks are getting exposed. This is for financial. But what happened if something happening in power or smart uh, systems or smart city system, it could also create a lot of problems. And many people uh, might uh, die out of this terrorism and also war for between the country. The future is going to be, they're saying that they're not going to use anything, any other weapon than they are, other than using cyber warfare, right? attack using cyber um, attacks, you know, hack and, and and have online attacks to bring down things. So that is a different type of threats and based on the motivation, the name changes, right? So this is what we need to understand when we talk about hackers and what is the threats we face online. So how do they work? This is the second most important things we need to understand. They work as an ecosystem, like we talk about you know, education ecosystem, uh, medical ecosystem, Cyber criminals also work as an ecosystem. They work hand in hand. For example, if you have to attack, you know, someone who is sitting in somewhere who is who I am targeting as a victim. Okay, it could be bank account, credential data, digital real estate, whoever it may be. So there are organizations who helps to do that. You can hire people, or uh, you can hire organizations to do that. Am I right? So there are people who produce code, like how you have developers to produce company software and website. There are, you know, crime web producers who code and sell it in the black market. We call it as a dark web. Somebody do licensing and package, am I right? They also like affiliate who distribute to multiple people. Am I right? They also check for botnets, money mules, consulting. So there's a complete ecosystem working at. So cyber crime is not going to stop because it is a $2 trillion business. What is the motive? It's a two trillion dollar business. I'm talking about US dollar, two trillion. Right? So and and so many people have are working within the system. If you look at so many people are working within the system. So it's going to create a lot of impact. Right. So it's rather than talking about how to eliminate and all those things, we need to see how to protect. That is the best way and the best thing which we have. Because as are more advanced, every time you come up with something, they will also come up with something because it's a complete industry. That's a message I want to convey to all of you that we need to make sure we create awareness, we use the right tool, we create uh, you know, safety mechanisms, uh, then you know, eliminating the enemy because it is very difficult to you know, eliminate the enemy because they are unseen, they work in dark web. Right, dark net we call it in in hacking world, hackers world. You know, so that's complete ecosystem which we need to fight and protect ourselves. So, what is the problem with the privacy? So, criminals, you know, they they can easily use social media. That is the one of the easy thing which I can use. You know, social media. I can connect with you, Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Say that I am friend of so and so. I want to help you. I want to help you on you know helping for your exam, helping your business, then they steal personal information. Social media is something very easy target for cyber criminals to get in. And it's not someone, uh, you can talk about, no, it's okay, I'm, I'm a normal user, so it might happen. But not only to you, it happened to the political leaders, it happened to police officers, it's happened to military uh, top generals, right? Recently, uh, yeah, yeah, 
you know, within the year, I think you can go and search, uh, Australian Prime Minister was hacked. So imagine um, what kind of security you might be having, top security offices, everything, but even his system was hacked. It was in the newspaper, he came and declared emergency news saying that it was hacked and this was the impact it has had. So that kind of, you know, uh, problem we have. So you cannot take it for granted, this kind of cyber, uh, you know, ecosystem and cyber criminals and hackers. So we need to create awareness. And not only that, they're not going to use as a man, you know, somebody sitting there, they're use, going to use bots, automated tools. They are going to, for example, sometimes you see how come somebody having 1 million users in Facebook or likes or, or Twitter, I don't want to name someone, but you will be guessing right now. You know, some famous, because, uh, because they have no, all of a sudden it goes up to 1 million, 2 million, because they use bot, it creates automatic accounts, create posts, like, follow. And all of them is based on, right now you're using artificial intelligence to follow you, right? There are parts. And imagine these bots, it's not human being, it's, it's a codes, it's a machines, the internet, right? And if I, if, if I am going to create across the globe, uh, multiple bot, I call it as a botnet. <laughs> then I'm going to launch an attack against you. If a single person attacks, <laughs> attacks, us, attacks us, sometimes we are very vulnerable, am I right? So we are not able to defend as a human. Maybe we can defend one, two, three. But what, have, what happened if you know, thousands of botnets, bots across the globe is attacking you as an individual? It's called denial of service attack, DDoS attack. So once they attack you, then they access your devices and networks. So that is what happens across the globe. So these are the cyber criminal ecosystem, which I want to just share with you. So before I, I get in, I want to share as we speak, you know, before I get in, I just want, if you have anything you can ask, but I want to share something very interesting. As we speak, you want to see what's happening in the internet? Are you interested? Let me see in the chat box. Let me, uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to address that block mail as screen recording. You, you are you interested to see what's happening right now in the internet and who's attacking what and which countries is impacted? Is something you, where you can go and check. Are you interested? I'm only, I think only five people. So that means many of you are away from the screen. Uh, I want to see as many as people to, you know, uh, Type yes, uh, yes, that's something great. So let me share you what's happening as a live map. Okay. So this is what is happening across. There is almost 31 million attacks on this day today. There is 31 million. Oh my. So who's the top targeted country? Nepal, Mongolia, Indonesia. Okay, great. What are the top industries? Education. Government, so imagine that's why I'm saying students are now students are online. So cyber criminals are targeting. Imagine some time back, uh, Zoom, when they had no encryption in, in, in an online class in the Singapore, you know, the hackers get into that and posted a pornography message or photos or he started playing a video. That's something which is dangerous. Right? So more you are connected to the internet, especially education institutes are prone to such kind of attack. Second one is government and ISP and MSP. So that is something which is you know, shown as that data. So you know that what is bot now, am I right? Because I just showed you, I'm going to talk about what is warm and backdoor in the next slides. So you will understand at the end of the say, the end of the session, you will you, you understand a bigger picture about what's happening in the internet. You will talk about malware, you will talk about viruses, worms, and how it works. Okay. So that is something which is botnet is the most dangerous thing. See now at a time it is talking about, you know, every day what is happening, there is an attack. Four, four million attack, that's something which is dangerous. Recent daily attacks. Imagine that they are saying about 400, it was four, 400 million attack. It's very dangerous. Right. This is something which you can see. And also, it's a live map. Okay, I want to see which country is impacted. United States, I'm giving another map to show you. So what is happening in the United States? 
you know which country it's coming incoming and outgoing attack overall activity what type of worms is coming so it can give you a complete map to talk about what is happening in a live attack so that does it uh, sounds scary 31 million attack today has happened so what's your feedback about that so if everybody is exposed there is so much things happening when we are sitting now who knows maybe we are getting attack some somebody is trying to steal our information as we speak okay yes it's scary am i right so let us get into the next part of that uh, uh, educational one which is about uh, trojans spyver like pegasus you know trojan horse malvers now how people can uh, log in on uh, connect your mobile and turn on your camera and and, and you know watch what you are uh, see what you are doing or spy what you are speaking okay so let us understand about malware a little bit um so what is malware can anyone type before we get in have you come across any type of malware use use your chat box do you happen to find some malware in your laptop or mobile malicious code that is great have you been exposed any time to malware no no ransomware exactly is one of the malware because is one of the malware okay great so arin dan is saying yes he has been exposed so let us see what is malware so malware are malicious software as i said if that intention is not good, doing good it's not like installing a zoom or installing a microsoft word but the intention of installing a software is to steal or attack or with a malicious you know uh, intention their main um, aim is to you know steal information right take the data so it could be in many ways it could be a virus it could be a worm ransomware bots as we saw spam email which is used spyware right adware when you are seeing advertisement you just click they can do and also trojan horses something sit inside our computer uh, we do not know they start you know gathering information like key loggers when you they sit in your computer you see it's nothing they capture all the information you are typing in your keyboard and take that information and send to someone who is in the internet so as you go to icic bank kfh you know adcb any bank are you entering information they are also taking your information that is a trojan has sitting something inside with some kind of a malicious code which you do not do not know but they take the information and send it out so trojan has spyware and all those things does so what is the difference between virus and worm let us watch a small video this is something which is really interesting it's something educational because you know at least you will all uh, like that let me share sound a computer but there are differences amongst that can cause damage to your computer but there are differences among these three what is a virus a computer virus attaches itself to a program or file enabling it to spread from one computer to another leaving infections as it travels like a human virus a computer virus can range in severity some may only cause mildly annoying effects while others can damage your hardware software or files Almost all viruses are attached to an executable file which means the virus may exist on your computer but it actually cannot infect your computer unless you run or open the malicious program it is important to note that a virus cannot spread without a human action such as run the infected program so what is a worm is similar to a computer virus by design and is considered to be a subclass of virus worms spread danger with a worm is its capability to replicate itself on your system so rather than your computer sending out a single worm it could send out hundreds or thousands of copies of itself creating a huge devastating effect one example would be for a worm to send out a copy of itself to everyone listed in your email address book then the worm replicates and sends itself out to everyone listed in each of the receiver's address book and the manifest continues on down the line 
Due to the copying nature of a worm and its capability to travel across networks, the end result in most cases is that the worm consumes too much system memory or network bandwidth, causing the web servers, network servers and the individual computers to stop responding. So what is a Trojan horse? The Trojan horse at first glance will appear to be a useful software but will actually do damage once installed or run on your computer. Those on the receiving end of the Trojan horse are usually tricked into opening them because they appear to be receiving legitimate software or files from a legitimate source. Some Trojans are designed to be annoying like changing your desktop, adding silly active desktop icons or they can cause serious damage by deleting files or destroying information on your system. Trojans are also known to create a backdoor on your computer that gives malicious users access to your system possibly allowing confidential or personal information to be compromised. Unlike viruses and worms, Trojans do not reproduce by infecting other files nor do they self-replicate. So that's all about viruses, worms and Trojans. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Okay, so uh, just to show you um, what is the difference between virus, worms, because at the end of the day, this is something which we face every day, but we do not know. So virus, uh, you know, requires a host, it has to be triggered by human action, but worms spreads, you know, by itself. So we all know with coronavirus, you know, um, um, COVID-19, the difference is, and we know what is quarantine, how to uh, segregate, how to, you know, uh, remove worm and what other things has to be done. Same thing, you know, you can also combat that with the um, virus in the computer. Great. So how do we remove? So we talk about problem, but I also want to talk about solutions, right? So how many of you have connected using Windows 10 system? Today? Windows 10, how many of you? Windows 10. Just want to see how many of you are connected. Yeah. Windows 10, am I right? Great, yeah, very good, very good. Fantastic. So. Sometimes while writing my newsletters, I tend to type so fast that there are spelling. So Windows 10, it has got a built-in uh, anti malware removal tool. Okay. So if you have that, it is very easy to work, easy to remove all your devices. Let me give you that. Let me just show you how you can do that. So I, what I want to do as we speak, as the video is going to be played, please do the same thing in your Windows 10 system. Uh, we call it as a Microsoft Defender and you can run and try to see uh, if there is any virus or worm in your laptop. Okay, so let us start. No. Supercabra tutorial channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're going to be talking about how to launch the Windows Defender Security Center app on your Windows 10 PC, which is the built in virus scanner that comes with your system in order to find any greeblies that might be crawling around on your computer that you might want to get rid of so that it doesn't potentially compromise your system, let people get a hold of your passwords or any other scary stuff that might happen because of it. And accessing the Windows Security Center program is as easy as A, making sure your computer is completely up to date so it's properly installed, and then going down to the Windows search bar in the lower left-hand corner of your desktop and typing in Windows Defender. And then you should find the Windows Defender security section. From here, you can click on Open Windows Defender Security Center. And this is where most of your actions will take place. We'll go into the Virus and Threat Protection section here. And we'll go ahead and click Scan Now. Now, for the most part, the most scans that you'll need to do through this program are the quick scan feature. What this is going to do is it's going to let Windows go through all of the most likely sections that viruses tend to go in order to infect your computer, look around for anything that looks suspicious, identify anything that's bad, and then it'll let you know so that you can quarantine it, delete it, or do any of the other recommended actions 
in order to get rid of it or lock it away so that it no longer can hurt your updated your virus and threat protection information on your computer in a while. It's a good idea to do that. So that's something which I want to do, all of you. You know, you just need to uh, run it. It is, comes along with Windows 10. Uh, and the most important thing is you need to make sure that check for update. Every day, there are so many viruses and worms and malware are released. As you can see in the previous uh, map, you know, how much attack is happening. So you need to every day make sure your antivirus, you know, is getting updated. You know, right now, it's, Microsoft is not virus, it's a malware defender, right? It has got all the signature, you know, to even go up to ransomware protection. So it can do that. So I want you to just pay attention and make sure that- So that you also, can compare that. You know, go and run and enable for update and make sure that you have the latest update. So if it is updated, it will show you. Then also you have something called firewall and network protection in, 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 in Windows Defender. What is this? This will help you if anybody has to come to your laptop, you can say which program can come in or which program can go out. So it's like you are living in a security you know, guarded uh, building and telling your you know, guardman or the security man saying that only people who have this authorized you know, card can come in. Or you give them the name that these are the people who can, you, you can let in to the building. So same way, you can create a firewall policy network protection to make sure if there is any attack happening from the internet, it can protect. And if there is any other unwanted things are coming out, it can also stop. So that is, again, something which is very important, all right? So same way, you may ask, what, what if I have a mobile phone, all right? You don't, no need to buy if you're having Windows 10. It comes, if you have a original license, if it's installed, it will be there. But if you don't have, you can buy any other thing like not an antivirus, smart tag. You can go and such. Many things are available, but make sure your PC and laptop are protected. So what if you have something like a mobile phone? That is also something which we all want to make sure I have a protection, all right? You are using a mobile phone. How I can make sure that I'm protected? So for that, we recommend to keep something called, there are many solutions, same way as I said, uh, you can you can talk about so many other vendors like Norton and so on and so forth. But also, I have I'm, I'm just giving an idea where you can go and download a software which is called Malware Byte. Okay, so I'm going to talk about so many tools to make sure you are protected because I'm going to talk about next thing is internet you know safety for your children parental control software. Okay, there are many vendors you can go and choose. But I'm giving an example. So malware by tools, what is going to do? It do uh, virus scanner, fiber, ransomware, serum, ransomware protection, anti-root code scanner, adware, free antivirus, everything is there. You can download a free version or premium version. It is also available on your iOS and Mac devices, all right? So you can go and check that. You can install that and you know build security. So it can help you uh, with all the attacks like spyware and other things from your mobile to protect. So you can do with this software. So it's called malware bytes. Right? This is just an example, but as you said, you can go and do any other software. So let us come back to our presentation. We talked about two things, right? The most dangerous thing is about, uh, the first danger is malware. It could be virus, worms, spyware, ransomware. And how to define? You can enable with Microsoft, you have a Microsoft different and comes along with that. It's a free, if you have bought a licensed Microsoft 10, right? It keep updating you and protect you against all that time. And Marvel Byte are any of the tools which you can use for your mobile. So that's just the first step to protect from ourselves from that. Okay? So is that clear? You want to ask any question before we go on to the move on to the next one? I can pass for some time. We want to ask something. Uh, box. You can type your questions. Maybe I can I can answer which antivirus you can. Microsoft built Defender itself an antivirus, am I right? So it can do antivirus, anti malware. Uh, even it can go up to something that is if you are, buy some advanced uh, subscription, it can also do ransomware direction. So it can help you. Windows Seven, you, you have to in, install maybe uh, 
Um, I'm not sure. It, it comes with the basic version of it, but you know you can install any other third party or cement pad, uh, you know Norton or Casper key. You can. Okay. So that is the first step to protect. If you are not doing that, please make sure because I show what is the danger. Right. So I will talk about parental content software in the next slide. We will talk about cyber bullying. Fine. So let us get into cyber attack. How the cyber attack happens? What is the anatomy of cyber attack? Um, okay. So what is the anatomy of hacking? This is how they do it. Yeah, we saw the cyber criminal ecosystem, but how do they hack? They use different tools and tricks to connect. First of all, they do research about you. Who are you? What are you doing? You know, so they, they, do, they do a complete research about a targeted person because they're not going to just come and attack. They always look for, they hunt for victims, right? They do a research. And they stage an attack. They will send you a phishing email, spam, or a phone call, or, you know, they will do different type of methods like social engineering to get in. Then the third one is get inside your mobile device or laptop or your network. Split trade, right? They, even if you have a firewall, they can come with advanced technologies and techniques. Once they get in, that what they are going to do? They are going to take all the information and, and get outside, right? There is a, their objective. They will get into that and then they will try to have a command and control center outside and then try to attack you or gather information and take your data from inside your mobile or laptop or servers to the internet. That is a cyber attack diagram, an anatomy of attack. So any information, you think how they can take, you are sharing in your Facebook, your personal information, your family photos, your, your date of birth, sometimes your school information, they can collect all this information to gather information. So small, easy found data. They, they will collect all of them and try to create like small things, who bigger part of together, right? Like eye, bone, leg, everything. Then they can create a bigger picture about you. They will little items led to big information, like your family information, your phone number, your license plate. With your license plate, I can go and search this plate is registered to whom, right? House street, travel info. The more small information, I can create a complete information about you. We call it as you know uh, enumeration and you know trying to uh, build a solid information about the attack, the victim. That is what they are doing. Then they start as we start speak about get inside with different tools and attack you and get. Out. So that is something which is happening with cyber tools. So what I'm going to do? We are going to have a, a ten minutes break um, for a prayer, and we will resume. Exactly in, in, in 10 minutes. Is that okay? Because I just want to make sure that we, it's a two hour session. We will resume exactly. It's 8 10 here. Most people will resume at 8 20. So we'll have 12 minutes break, 8 8. So we'll resume after 10 minutes uh, as a break. Then we'll have another one hour uh, to continue. Uh, so we'll extend maybe instead of 9 o'clock, we'll be 9 50. Uh, so that you will also have it. So see you soon and please make sure you join at 8 uh, 20 Indian time, 8 20 p.m. Indian time, because I'm going to show you about parallel control software. What is cyber bullying? How you can live demo on cyber bullying softwares so they can install on your you know mobile devices or in your uh, PC and, and monitor or protect your children when they are online. That is what I'm going to show you. Uh, so stay tuned. After the break, we'll resume. Thank you very much. And the session will be live. Uh, you can post your questions, whatever questions you have in the chat box. Uh, after the break, I'll come and answer. Thank you very much. Vincent, we'll have a 10 minutes break. People can post all your questions, doubts, Q&A in this uh, chat box so that it will be easy for uh, me at the end of the session to answer, okay?
Okay, we are back now. Uh, yeah, we're going to start now. Thanks for your research. So let us get into the next uh, modern topic, which is related to the parental control and cyberbullying. Okay. So, so far we have understood what is cyber uh, social media impact and uh, cyber criminal ecosystem and also about malware and how you can protect your PC and mobile from you know, malware. That's something which you have learned. Now we are going to get into cyber bullying and then parallel control, which is something which is very important for <coughs> Parents or teachers. So okay. Is it uh, audible for all of you? Is it clear? Yeah. To make sure. Very good. Uh, yes, you are our audible, Dr. Ibrahim. Okay, very clear. Venu Sankar, thank you. And uh, let us begin now. So, we will talk about cyberbullying. Before we start cyberbullying, have you anytime come across your children or your students in school or colleges uh, talking about? Uh, Cyberbullying to you? They have complained any time about cyberbullying to you? Let's use the chart box because just, just general, you know, discussion because we need to understand how much is uh, how much information really the students are share, sharing with you. Uh, So have you any time come across um, cyber bullying from your children? They're complaining to you. You can use a chat box. Yes, no. No, okay, Freda, okay, no. Okay, not yet, not yet, okay, great. But if you, if you look at the initial statistic, it says 65% of social media user, you know, they have been exposed to cyberbullying. Exactly, that is the answer I want to look at. They may not be knowing it. They are exposed, they may not be knowing it. Or they are afraid to tell you. They are afraid to tell you that I'm going through such kind of problem. That's what I want to, voice is not clear, is it? Uh, why? Is it clear now? Uh, is it audible? What about others? I want to make sure. Yeah. Sounds good to you. Okay, great. Fine. Thank you. So, so the whole idea is what? If you are, your children are not sharing those information, that is even much more dangerous. I repeat, if your children are not sharing that they are going through some kind of a cyber bullying, or they are not aware about that, it's even more dangerous. So what do I mean? If they do not know, 
then it is easy for them, for the cyber criminals or who is bullying to take into the next level. And I will show in the last slide about cyber sextortion. That is the topmost crime against women, girls, and also children. That's something which is happening. Previously, we used to think that it is only against women, but now even against men, it has it's happening. So if you're not able to tell them, if you're not able to advise them, if you're not able to you know, communicate them regularly, understand their pain points uh, and talk to them in a friendly manner, you know, and understand their psychology, then it will be very difficult uh, to find out. And not only that, they will get into the next level where nobody can help. So that's why cyberbullying is something very serious, very dangerous, and even government have created helplines and hotlines, not only in India, across the globe, this is the biggest problem for against children. Okay. So let us get into that topic, because this is like, you know, uh, hidden, it's like a Trojan house, you do not know until it, it comes out. Right. So what is cyberbullying? Cyberbullying is bullying with the use of digital technology because normally in the school bullying happens. You know, the, the friends fight, they started harassing others, you know, they, they use abusive words, but you know, they forget and come back. But at least when the children comes into home, uh, they get into home, they forget about what's happened or it's, it's a different life. Maybe they are afraid, but you know, at least not really. But, Digital technologies, when they have, it's going to taunt them across 24 hours because they can send them a WhatsApp message, they send them Twitter, Facebook, anything they can use to follow and annoy them 24 by 7. That is something which is dangerous. It can happen in social media, messaging platform, even gaming. Recently, there was an incident. Friends, they were playing a game, a social media game, and because they were fighting, they were having bullying each other. And four of them joined together and killed a person, a youth who was in college. This happened, it was in the newspaper. So even online games can lead into some kind of uh, bigger problems. They use gaming platforms to bully you. So mobile phone. So that is something which is we need to understand. There is a video, but lack of time, I will not play that. Rather, I will share it with you where you can uh, use it. Uh, let me see, yeah, it's better to play. There are four different types of cyberbullying. One is physical, verbal, social, and cyberbullying. So what we are talking about, cyberbullying. Am I right? Posting, sending hurtful text, emails, posts, images, video, all of them comes into that. Making online threats, you know, that, that if you don't do, I will complain to your mother, I will show your photo to your friends, I'll make you ashamed in front of others, I will complain to principal, they take some information and then threaten. You know, that is something which is very important, very dangerous. Deliberately excluding others online, spreading nasty gossip or rumor online. That is cyberbullying. Okay. So that's something which let us watch a small video. It's better. I prefer to share that video to you. About top 10 forms of cyberbullying. Yeah. Cyberbullying. It's a problem that's growing fast. In this video, we'll take you through the top 10 forms of cyberbullying so you have the knowledge to prepare children. 1. Exclusion. Exclusion can happen in several ways. Your child might be deliberately excluded from online activities, conversations, or social media tags. Children who don't have the latest technology, such as a mobile phone, are prone to exclusion. 2. Harassment Harassment is sustained and intentional bullying, comprised of abusive or threatening messages sent to your child or to a group. This can severely affect a child's mental well-being. 3. Outing Outing is the act of publicly humiliating a child or group through the online posting of private or embarrassing information without consent. Even reading your child's messages on their mobile phone out loud can be considered a form of outing. 4. 
cyberstalking. Cyberstalking is a dangerous form of cyberbullying in which attackers harass victims through online communications like email or social media. It also refers to adults using the internet to contact and meet young people for abusive purposes. 5. Fraping Fraping is when someone logs into your child's social media account and impersonates them, posting inappropriate content in their name. Remember, everything rude or otherwise posted online may never be fully gone, even if deleted. 6. Fake Profiles Fake profiles can be created by someone to hide their real identity with the intention of cyberbullying your child. The cyberbully may also use someone else's email or mobile phone to harass them. 7. Dissing Dissing is sending or posting cruel information about your child online to damage their reputation or friendships. It also includes posting damaging photos, screenshots, or videos online. 8. Trickery Trickery involves gaining your child's trust so that secrets can be shared publicly online. A cyberbully will befriend your child, leading them into a false sense of security before sending their private information to others. 9. Trolling Trolling means deliberately provoking a response through the use of insults on online forums and social media sites. A troll will personally attack your child, aiming to make them angry and provoke a response. 10. Catfishing Catfishing involves stealing online identities and recreating social networking profiles for deceptive purposes. Catfishers look at your child's profile and take information to create a fake persona. This could involve using personal information, potentially damaging your child's online reputation. Please share this video with other parents to help spread awareness and so it's something which is alarming, right? We may be thinking cyberbullying is the symbol, but there are 10 different methods how online we can do cyberbullying. Right? So let us get into that next one. So what, what it could create, as you saw in that video, I'll share the video. Somebody is asking, I will share that uh, video to you. So when bullying happens online, it can affect the children like mentally, emotionally, and physically. That's something which is very uh, common. And how they can do, at least we, we have to tell kids, especially children, to restrict social media tools, to discreetly protect your account without that person being notified. Okay, so somebody is doing it, restrict them or block them, that is the best. And moderate comments on your own post, don't post everything and reply and send you a notification. On Instagram, we send you a notification for about to post anything that will cross the line. So even if you type something, there is some notification. So make sure your settings are updated so that nobody can kind of play with it. So let me come into the important topic for today, especially for parents and children and teachers. That is about parental control. Myself, having been using this software for the last almost one year, I felt that the internet has become, if not you know, more secure, but I feel it's better for, for my children because I'm able to see and control and help them understand the danger of online uh, presence. So parental control is something that's very important. You need to make use of uh, the tools which is available with parental control software to protect them, to help them to even create awareness about what is cyberbullying, what is a different type of cyberbullying is present in the internet. Right? Kids need to be protected indeed. 60% of the parents say they have directly witnessed an online threat to their kids. Even though I did not see many of you are saying, but 60% of the parents say that they have been uh, they have directly witnessed an online threat. So parent control, they even, uh, there are so many other software, but Casper Key and Safe Kids and so many softwares are available. Grooming, porn and bully use, you know, these are the things which is happening to their children. And is by Business Mirror magazine, they said 
one of the best or uh, uh, most popular is Kaspersky. And also there is other software which is available. You can go and download and use it. So when you get into Kaspersky, I want to just give a demo. So you can go and manage their screen time. This is the first thing you can do. When you are uh, connected with, uh, when you're downloading a parental control software and bring all the uh, gadgets like mobile, laptop, PCs under your control. First thing is you, they, you can manage their screen time. Now how many hours they can use. Second thing, when you are going to school or colleges or work, you can also monitor where they are, their, their location, right? So what kind of, where do they locate now? So that is something which is easy to track. And also their battery level. Sometimes your child is going out, the battery is going to die. So if, if it's going to be, you know, the mobile is turned off, you may get into panic. What happened? But if you have this software, you know that it's getting into 80% or 40%. 10%. So you know that you were, your child may get out of connection, out of connectivity. Maybe you can call them and tell, put in charger and let me know what you are doing so that I'm not getting going to get panicked. And also it blocks all the bad YouTube search records, videos and other things from the software. So that is something very important. Allow, how it helps, keeps your child safe online, allows you to block access to adult website and contents like pornography, gaming, violent things. But also blogs, harmful YouTube sex request on topics like black alcohol. This is something which is happening mostly with the youths and children. And, and, and you know, black mafia is targeting children. So if you are installing such kind of software, you will know that somebody is sending that message to your children. Against that, you can use this software. Helps you to manage access to games and improve inappropriate app because you can know what they are doing. Let you manage their screen time, report their public activities in social media to you, and also share expert advice and tips, you know, how to, you know, not to stop them completely from social media, but give them advice and guidance. And this is good, this is bad, right? So that is how it works. Let me let us watch a small video on that perspective. Okay, so I'm going to skip that. Do a quick uh, video. So. Now I have been using the full version of the Kaspersky Total Security Learns that they might have like how you can't reach your kid's smartphone once the battery is dead, afraid of how your kids might visit harmful websites, getting cyber bullied on social media and many other personal concerns. And based on a family campaign report in September 2019 by Kaspersky, about 60% of parents say they have directly witnessed an online threat to their kids. While there are current methods like checking the kids' browsing history, manually switching off the kids' devices, has actually led to a huge tension and conflict. So to curb those ongoing issues, Kaspersky has introduced a new software called Kaspersky Save Kids. Now firstly, from a compatibility point of view, the good news is that it is not only available on the Windows and the Mac platform but also on the Google Play Store and iOS devices as well. So the Kaspersky Safe Kids has many handy features with the software and the app so let's together check out these amazing features specifically for the app which is also available for the software as well. Firstly, there's the online content filter. By looking at the app after hitting the wheel icon just next to the internet row option, you can firstly toggle the web activity monitoring on or off. Then looking at the middle of the screen, you'll find the search settings where in there, you'll find the boxes of options like safe search to exclude or block inappropriate content from search results. There's the safe search YouTube that blocks unsafe results on YouTube. Then there's an option to get notified if your child searches for restricted information as well. Then below that, you'll find the advice for parents, which we will dive deeper into that later. Then looking towards the bottom screen, there's the website settings to view all the type of content to switch to what's forbidden, warn or allowed, blocking access to all websites, 
and exclusions for you to add the website to a forbidden website list. Now looking at the next feature is the screen time management. To access that, you'll need to hit the device options under the device use. And you can monitor the screen usage time accordingly over there, where you can set fixed times and a set numbers of hours per day that the devices can be used as well. Then there's also the app usage control. Now you can access this option from the home screen of the app by also hitting the wheel icon just next to the apps and games where inside you'll find the toggle options for app monitoring and age restrictions and you'll find the app categories which are divided into different groups of categories like browsers, communications, email and many more which you can switch between allowed or forbidden as well. And yes, there are exclusions for the app which you can add accordingly. Following that, there's also the real-time alerts where it is represented by the bell icon where you get all the alerts over there where there will be alerts if your child tries to break a rule set, getting requests to modify the rules or try to even uninstall the Kaspersky Safe Kids app too. Next, looking at the child's locator feature, you can access that at the map icon at the bottom of the app. So based on the specific device that Kaspersky Safe Kids have been installed and registered with, you can track your child's real-time location via GPS. Then you can also set the allowed area and the period of your child who should be allowed in that area and get alerts if your child leaves the permitted area. Then there's a social network monitoring as well. and the app itself to get expert advice from a professional psychologist on how to react if your child breaks any rules instead of typically just scolding them or punishing them for their mistakes. So guys, that's the whole walkthrough of the app. Now, if you guys have any further questions, ask me at the comments. Okay. So that's something which is really useful. I believe uh, most of you should have these problems. If you have a child, you're worried about their locations, what they are browsing, you know, sometimes they are using, overusing it, you're not able to control, you're not able to know what they are doing it. So all these issues, once you have a parental control software, it will help you to um, you know, um, protect them more than that, uh, you know, punishing them. It's not like a punishment, but you can protect them and monitor them, help them to understand, to use it for productive purpose. That is about, Kasperky and, and uh, I want to show the live demo, but I think he covered most of the thing, which I'm using it in, in my own uh, login account. I manage almost five of uh, six of the devices, laptops, PCs, everything is in my central board. Let me show you that also so that you feel how it looks like on the screen quickly. Well, you can find it very uh, handy, and also not only that, you can um, you can monitor. I think up to uh, you don't have uh, five or ten people. I think within your family, so that way you are also able to check out. Let me share this screen to you. This is where I can monitor all my uh, kids. For example, then I can also know the, the devices, you know, what is available from my control. So from a single dashboard, you are able to uh, know every day, you know, you can come up and just watch it and find out who is using what and, and if they have any violated any policy, it will also show you. If they have to access something, it will ask the permission. It will tell you, if a child is trying to access, do you, do you like to allow? You know, that kind of information comes in. And the most important thing, as you have seen, uh, for example, you can also know their location and also do a geofencing. For example, you're supposed to be in your school and if it's going out of the school, then it can send you an alert. That's something that's very useful when your child is living in a metropolitan city where he has to sometimes go alone and, and, and he has to commute by himself, this kind of things will help. If you find it, it's going beyond that, 
fencing level, it can send you a notification in your mobile. It's something which is very important, right? It can show you the map and, and, and also it can say device use, what application he has installed, social network, you know, how many devices he has, all of them can be visible with that. Okay. So the devices and monitoring. I hope all of you are able to see my screen, right? The beauty of this is even it has got something like a password manager, VPN, uh, which could also help in a different way. Uh, to help. So this is the device I have, all the tablets, iPhones, who is assigned, uh, Redmi notebook. So I can click on that and see today what they have done and how much time they have used. So that's something which is very helpful uh, to connect and control, especially people are in our eyes and your children are away. And this is the best way to you know, control and monitor. So let me get into that presentation. So let us get into some of the uh, tips and tricks uh, how to remain safe on social media. We talked about problems, cyberbullying, cybercrime, all those problems you have seen, Walvers, how they can do it, how they can install and tackle. But also, we need to know how to be safe in social media. We talked about uh, parental control software, it's going to help to an extent. There is a free software and paid software. Uh, so, we can use free software also, work uh, as almost most of the features are available, but maybe we're not able to add more devices or manage as a family. But if you have paid one, it's very few uh, dollars. I think it's around uh, thousand rupees per year, something like this. So you can monitor and have extra feature like uh, GPS monitoring, battery level, and much more in that sense. So I recommend all of you, if you're worried about uh, your children, please go out and start using this. So let us talk about how to be safe in social media. Um, this section is going to be uh, more interesting because I'm going to tell you uh, what's going to be there, what's going to be available online when you are using your uh, Facebook or uh, Gmail, uh, or if you're using Google Map for traveling. So how much information is somebody can take? Uh, or maybe uh, we'll talk about what Google and Facebook knows about you. So Microsoft parental control also is good. Yeah, as, I said, as I told you, if you are using my parental control is also going to do all of them, it's also free. Um, as I said, most of the parental control software comes free with certain features, basic feature. And when you want advancement, it asks you for, to pay. So let us get into that. Privacy setting awareness. So this is a question which I want to leave with you. What Google knows about you? So what Google knows, everybody is using some kind of, uh, uh, you know, Android phone, right? Even if users are having iPhone, they want to have Android because that's where some, most of the softwares are available. So they get into easily into Android phone. So Android doesn't work without the Google account. It asks you to enter and that's it. Then, then once you're having mobile and Google account, then, you know, what Google knows from top to bottom, right? So it, it, it knows about how many emails, who has come, and what is your contact, and uh, how many videos you have watched, what type of videos you are watching. Uh, and also, if you're playing, you know, what is your uh, social uh, or, or online gaming uh, connectivity you have. And also your passwords, obviously, most of them are stored in Microsoft Chrome, or sorry, Google Chrome. Right, and also your location when you travel, whom you visited, you know, how frequent you are going to the particular location, and all your documents, wallets, and how many devices you have, and what are the things you are searching every day in Google. Google uh, search is something which everybody is using, so they know what is your everyday habit. Are you, uh, you know, watching some kind of specific movies? Are you searching for some place or what type of education? Uh, programs you are looking for, a uh, certification program you are looking for, everything knows, uh, Google knows about it. So somebody is controlling us now, right? Maybe we will not know our secret to our wife, 
maybe my children or parents, but Google has all those data about your psychology, about your everyday routine. They have that. Right? Same thing with Facebook. Right? If you are using a Facebook as a regular user, and they also understand you and also start selling you advertisements. When you go to Facebook, you get a lot of ad, buy this course or buy this. So, so they, they want to understand, they, they track you and then try to sell you. So Facebook also knows most of your information. Right. So how to make sure that you are protected, uh, especially online privacy. I will tell the five steps. Think before you click anything. Remember that your thing you post may not be private. Maybe you think that it's private, it's true. And also know who your friends are. It's very important. And protect your privacy with password. Make sure you have protected. Respect for friends, online preference too. And also how to protect your privacy on mobiles. Make sure that you don't install untrusted apps. And also erase all apps before you recycle. Use antivirus software as I talked about before. And also avoid apps that leak your information. That is very important. I'm going to give you two main tips. If you are a Facebook and Google user, how to do a privacy check, all right? Most of you are using Facebook, but have you done any time a privacy check? Like you're going to a doctor every time and doing a physical medical checkup, all right? Uh, trying to test your BP, cholesterol, your sugar level. Same way, you have to do a privacy checkup at least every month, you know, in your uh, online accounts. So how you can do, let me share a simple link, how in fact I'm doing it. I prefer, I would like to share that for you as well, how you can do this private check. So let me share the screen. So what we're trying to do here, we're not just going to talk about problems, but also we are trying to help you how you can protect, all right? So if you have your um, Facebook account, you can go to privacy settings. I think there's the other slide. It talks about that privacy settings. Let me open that. Yeah. So you can click on that. Privacy setting. So it normally is opens, you know, all your uh, in Facebook, you have page for privacy settings, right? You have this. You go there, you'll find your privacy, security log, information, all this information are available, right? Blog post. So go there and do privacy checkup. And in this, it will tell you, it's like a guide, am I right? You can also set up a reminder every week or every month, it can remind you, please come and do a a scan for your Facebook account, for your social media account, because every time there is new things coming up. Right? So who can see what you share? This is the first thing. I'm going to do continue. I'm saying only me, uh, my birthdays, who can see future posts, who can post its stories, friends, limit past, for, uh, past post limit, and you can block people. No? So this is the things about that. Who can see what you share? How to keep your account secure? It is going to ask you, have you enabled two-factor authentication? That is something which is very important. Every month, try to change your you know, social media account password. And also it's going to talk about you know, your, your Facebook and other things. And also you can do uh, SMS authentications. If you have not done any uh, so, uh, two-factor authentication, you can enable that. Make sure when you log in, you also get a OTP to your mobile number. So that you are, you, even somebody can crack your password unless they have a OTP, unless they are having this account, they will not be able to connect your Facebook or, your, or hack your social media account. Or even for your for that instant, your Gmail or other things. So how people can find you on Facebook. So you do that again. Who can do that? What is your friend? Phone number, email. Is, if, you are, if somebody can know, they can contact you. Make it only me. So these are the things which you can 
do as a private citizen. Please make sure you do that on Facebook. Similarly, it's available for Google. You can also go and hide many of the information so that you don't become a victim uh, and it will help you to avoid you know, the cyber criminals to hack your account. So how to save stave at the office and online, as I said, lock it up always. Two is better. Make sure you always use two-factor authentication. As much as possible, use VPN so that you know people don't uh, take your information, but it's not encrypted. You know, they can use some kind of sniffing tools and other hacking tools to take your password. Stay always separate, means use for your office a separate laptop, personal things are separate. Always is better. Always think before you click on anything online. So what to do if you are breached a hack? This is also we need to train you, right? If somebody, for example, you have been hacked or you have been breached, your data is breached. So you can go and check a site called Have I Been Found? There is a site. You can go and check that. So it will tell you whether your accounts are hacked. And also you can have some knowledge. Can buy. And also there is something like phishing site where you can take a URL, go and click there, place that site. It will tell you it is the actual link or a phishing. Change your password if you're hacked. Call your bank and credit card companies. Consider setting you down your system because if you have a virus, it could spread. If you're connected to the internet, it, easily, it could easily spread. And also report the incident to action fraud. And also communicate to all involved, your friends, family, tell that I have a problem, I have been hacked. So that if hackers communicate to the friends and family, they know that you know they will not share some sensitive information. And also involve some third party expert to assess and, and you know correct action, take corrective action and document everything you do. So that is a thing which we want to enlighten about, you know, if you have been hacked, what you should do. And I'm going to cover another three main topics before we end this session. The first one is social engineering. Even though I have antivirus, malware, everything, but with human weakness, you know, for example, using knowledge of human behavior to elicit a defined response. So if you are even though you are protected with all the antivirus, anti malware software, but I can use human vulnerability, human weakness to collect information and then attack. Okay, that is called social engineering, the hacking of humans. So simple human behavior, for example, if I being put into some kind of problems, there could be two types of responses, natural and learned. What hackers are going to do, they will grab the scenario for you to enter, you know, into an illicit response, which they believe will give them a result they are looking for. They will put into a situation and say that it is urgent. Can you share your card? Can you share your password? Can you share your birthday? And share you share your you know, location. So this is the information they will entice. To. Then because of the weakness from the human behavior, you tend to share, then they, can, they will use that to attack. So social engineering, you know, one third of successful data breaches happening with using social engineering. So that is something which we all need to. There are a lot of demo sites and videos which I can share in the group, which you can watch. For example, with a simple uh, mobile phone, how you know, you, you're going, your iPhone, you're putting on a charger, just connecting your mobile charger in a common place, how I can steal your information. So there are so much videos available. I'll share it in the group. So let us see some of the real time example from social media. I'll share you and play some of the videos. So that. Okay. Uh, 
plug that into your computer. It could. Okay. This one video I want to show you is one of the world famous hacker. Um, many of us use our mobile phone or computers. We may go and connect on a charger or a USB drive, or maybe somebody is sending us a gift, a USB drive, maybe we plug in, you know. But how they can use that to install a malicious software and then remotely take control of your mobile or laptop. That's what this video, please pay attention and watch it. It's a simple video, but it could be done in a different way, right? So let me play that. Sorry. Install malicious software. Did you know this? Of course. Okay, that, <laughs> great. Well, no, every, I didn't know that, but I've never done that. I would never pick something up and plug it in because I, I mean, a lot have, of people do. I would never want to put something in. I didn't know what was on the stick. Yeah, but uh, people go to conferences and there's jars of USB drives and people just usually plug it in and don't think, think the better. But the people have known for years, you never do this. Yeah. But you have to think about how have hackers uh, evolved in their tradecraft to even do this with something that's so simple that anybody would fall for it. So think about, do you have an iPhone or an Android? I do. You do. So you charge Not it with the cable. You wish. <laughs> <laughs> so you charge the phone, right, with the cable? Yes. Right. What if I could tell you we could modify that cable so when it's plugged into your computer that we could remotely command the cable to install malware on your computer? The cable? The you're cable itself. And I'm going to show you in a second. A, you're talking about a little white? Yeah. yeah, right here. Doesn't that look like an ordinary charging cable to you? Yeah. How do you get the cable to the victim? Well, if you have on-site access, you're in a company and you can swap it out. Or we could do what we call a social engineering attack and send a device with a cable, like a new iPhone or a new mm -hmm. um, Pixel 4, and it comes pre-packaged in the box. And when you open the box and take the shrink wrapping off, it looks exactly like it came from factory. But what the target doesn't know is that the cable has been modified. So let me show you actually how it works. Yeah. Do you have, do you have any questions first? Yeah, I wonder how this works. Okay, all right. <laughs> so we're going to plug this in. What we have here on this white screen, this is the hacker, and this computer is sitting in Virginia. It's not even in this room. So this is the hacker. This here is the victim. This is us. We've plugged in the cable. And now what the attacker is going to do is command the cable to install malware, malicious software on the computer, so the hacker has complete control. So this device is a Bluetooth transmitter. I could be, you know, within about 300 feet of the computer, I could push a button on here, and then what's going to happen, if you look at the lower left-hand corner of the Windows computer where it says type here to search, in about five seconds you're going to see it like magically type. It's going to be a split second, and then what's going to happen over here, we're going to gain control of the computer. So what I want you to do, Phil, is see that A button? You can walk over there back to your chair. See the A? Sort just, of. Yeah, just... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's the bottom okay, the, one. Yeah, press the A button. Stop. Okay, and then we should look at the lower left-hand part of the screen. There it goes. That's the malware being injected. And that's it. That's all the victim sees. And I it don't happened see it that fast? That fast. So right now, you're controlling this computer from, from Virginia. Here. Yeah, I'm connected to a computer in Virginia. This has malware installed now because of the cable. And now I'm able to take full control of this computer as the hacker. So I could go through all the files on the computer. I can turn on the microphone and so that's something which is really uh, alarming, right? So they can just with a simple cable, I can send it to you, then I can monitor you remotely. That's what's happening. And also, um, recently there are so many ways the hackers can can take control. Uh, for example, if you're using Gmail, and how many of you go and browse um, and, and in an internet cafe, or even in your office, when you are connecting, for example, you're using your some, someone else's PC or laptop to log into your Gmail. So sometimes we, we do, am I right? For example, if you are in a hurry, we, don't, we have to send something on an urgent basis, we do that. But what they can do, you log in with your username and password with Gmail, and you don't save the password, by the way. You're not saving the password. You make sure that it is not saved locally. 
you log out very very good that's you did everything perfect but there is a program called you know reading the memory of your code for example if you are using mozilla or any other browser i can install a program after you leave you know you logged out perfect no nothing you clear the browsing history everything you left so i can install a code and it can read the memory content you know on the exe file and then it can display the password you entered so that's something which is very dangerous that's why i say always two is better always enable two factor authentication so if you have two factor authentication even somebody you know watch you or somebody can take your password still you have the other one which is called otp or you can use authenticator so you can enter that second code so please make sure in this entire workshop the one thing which i want to give as a take away for all of you please make sure you enable two factor authentication on on your social media gmail your your you know office email everything because even somebody takes your password which is most likely possible with the technics hacker use so if you have two factor authentication it can protect to a level, it will make the life of a hacker a bit harder but still they do it in a different way using again social engineering but please make sure that so let me come to a uh, last two portion of our session which is about how we can help students engage learning things using game online games so we are going to use something called online game for cyber security we have trained more than 50 to 60 students in the last two months who have learned and become cyber heroes it's a six days course but the student engage with every day one hour learn all the concepts using games and at the end of the day they know how to protect now how to uh, you know what is hacking how what is anti malware software what is phishing you know what is firewall they know everything using playing games so this site which is called nova cyber security lab is available free of cost please ask your children ask your students to log in and learn it talks about cyber codes secret life of hackers and cyber privacy and then also give you multiple option to play games i'm i, I thought of doing it because uh, what of time i'm not going to do so complete cyber security lab is available and uh, you can go one by one there is also quiz available to test their knowledge so that at least they know how to protect themselves so this is what we do as one step and also we take them to another level is called we create a smart city you know cyber city where we will give them like a cafe cyber cafe so how to use how they use wireless to hack right and also we tell them if you are using a smart home like iot devices smart fridge and smart tv how hackers can attack and what prevention methods you should do it we train the kids with the game game gamification of learning so that is the course which is available which is starting in fact uh, next month uh, in october so you can register and you know, we will share the link in the group so if your children are interested if you want them to be learning about that please register them so that they can become cyber heroes the last one is about cyber online gaming i told you before that online gaming also comes with dangers uh, because that is where they do cyber bullying they collect information they go to the level of you know killing people you know this an incident happened where friends have joined together and because of the online game they had fight and finally they killed they murdered a person murdered a, uh, their own classmate so online games are dangerous in the physical other side they can also inject malware because all those games you are using fortnite and whatever they whatever you call man and so on so for they can also inject the malware so that i can monitor you you know remotely so your pc mobile I, as we saw that they can bundle that software along with that game once installed then i can know what you are doing in your pc so it is very dangerous so there are so many things happen and the last point which i am going to end is about very very sad and you know unethical but unavoidable thing in the internet is about cyber sex sorcery which is happening very uh, 
common nowadays uh, and cyber sex toys and frauds are happening because once you are connected to the internet they take your mobile say so take your photos or even they may make a call online call video call maybe you are talking to someone on a normal call uh, so all of a sudden they turn into video call and they display some pornography some unwanted information and then they record that information then they used to you know blackmail you saying that you know you are on a call with the call girl with the pornography you are watching this video you never intended to do it but they record that and try to threaten you blackmail you so this type of frauds take frauds take place both against male and female victims this is the last two slide please pay attention majority of the victims are primary females and the predator can be both an unknown person and also known one there are so much happening within families within the society so we need to create awareness about cyber sex torts and frauds and also there is a cyber cell uh, in each state they have it i'm sure that the delhi government is doing and each state government is doing and each country is doing so the the modus operandi is what lot of people mostly men are being contacted on instagram or facebook by women with attractive profiles so what they do somebody is calling men are pro, you know vulnerable and weak uh, in terms of uh, you know pornography they get easily cheated so what they do they get into the site they watch the video the other party record the entire thing what we are doing and then they start blackmailing you that you watch the pornography i have the evidence i'm going to spread it in the social media if you don't pay me the money so you pay the money they going to ask you again ask you again and sometimes they will also misuse you and ask you to become a victim of sexual activities if you are a woman that's what is happening go and search in the news google that in your city cyber sector sir there are so much cases which is happening cyber crime police and everybody is trying to do but it is very difficult so awareness is very important that is what we need to create especially with women so precaution please always remember the internet is never forgets and forgives whatever you share is shared don't share in an appropriate kind of secondly reach and speed the internet is enormous so it can go out wildly and during an online interaction or chat the person on the other side is trying to rest through things and develop intimacy then it is cause of alarm don't become victim on that and never allow anyone whosoever and howsoever close that person maybe to capture any private message or pictures or video from you so this is the only way we can do that and also there is a lot of uh, you know cyber crimes and branch available for you that so cyber safety online safety is everybody responsible we cannot just say that okay this guy can be done you know somebody will help you no everybody is responsible so just to wrap up i want to tell you that we talked about what is cyber criminal ecosystem how people are using social media and cyber criminal ecosystem and also we talked about malware how you can protect using anti malware software freely available for your laptop and mobile and we talked about cyber bullying against students and how we can use parental control software even to a level how you can monitor your children uh, their location what they search somebody is doing on facebook if, if it is un, inappropriate it can block all those things we can do with cyber, uh, parallel control software and then we talked about your privacy setting in facebook and google you know so which is very important right and then we also talked about cyber game online game addictions now it is dangerous and finally cyber sex toys which is used heavily against women and girls so i would like to conclude and say one word there is no 100% security 99.99 but this 00.001 person is enough for hackers to attack you and cyber criminals are looking at that opening as i told you in the beginning cyber crime is a business it's an industry it's a 2 trillion dollar business so they're not going to leave you alone so i recommend and i request everyone who are online take this as your personal responsibility i have a lot of documents and videos which i will be sharing with the group and also i'll send you a feedback feedback form once you fill i'll send all the guidelines for how to be create cyber wellness program in your home in your school how you can do that those documents will be available free 
and also complete parental software, how to install and set up that software, that documents also will be available for you free. I'll share all of them in the WhatsApp group. Once you fill the feedback, you will get it. So now we have a few minutes to talk about how you can benefit from our cyber uh, IT expert training. There are courses for students, professionals, working people. So I would request Brother Salim to share a few things about uh, our security programs. And definitely if you are having children, you can enroll them on those programs, which is going to start next month. Yes, uh, Mr. Salim, go ahead. Then we will end. I'll take over and end. Salim? Yeah, uh, hi. Uh, can you able to hear my voice? Yeah, yeah, it's clear. Can you share your desktop? Go ahead. Yeah, let me share my screen. Okay. Uh, is my screen is visible to you all? Yes. Yeah, hi all. Uh, this is Mohammed Salim, and uh, I'll be just giving you some uh, details about the courses we are offering from uh, IT expert training. So uh, like before uh, we start, I just give a, a quick intro that IT expert training is a one-stop solution. Uh, where uh, we are providing uh, IT trainings uh, for the individuals who is looking for the career betterment. So uh, we, not only uh, cybersecurity, uh, we are having a different uh, level of courses on different uh, technology stream like programming, IoT, robotics, and uh, uh, cybersecurity, ethical hacking, and so on. So I'll just give you a quick uh, like intro about each uh, platforms and each technology stream. So we have uh, our uh, Python track where we uh, start with six course bundle uh, where uh, uh, any beneficiary can take from the base level uh, to the advanced level. So this course will uh, start with getting started with Python and they will be learning all the modules with relates to Python and they will become a pro to work on any Python related projects. So we bundle this and we are giving a very nominal price of 499 uh, in our portal. So I, I would request you to just note down the portal link, uh, learning.itexperttraining. I will also uh, like provide that link in the chat window going forward. And similarly, uh, we have a, a IoT course bundle where we uh, combine all the IoT related topics uh, from the basic, from the scratch to the pro level. So it is very useful for the students who are uh, like uh, coming out of the college or they wanted to uh, take uh, their career to, uh, through the IOT uh, level. So this course will be bundled and it will be uh, ha having a base price of 499. All the four courses will be uh, bundled and it will be uh, on 499 price. And uh, we, I, we also wanted to uh, tell you that already uh, 1,500 students have already taken it and get benefit out of it. And similarly, uh, now we came to the topic which we already discussed uh, on today's session, cybersecurity. So this is a huge topic and uh, we will we'll be having around like 40 plus hours of content and which all uh, taken by uh, Brother Hibrahim and uh, he uh, already like around 1,500 students went to it and they learned the sign from the basics to the advanced level. So we also uh, bundle this package and give a very nominal price of 497. So all these things, you just go and visit our website. You will be able to find uh, all these things in our portal, not only for students, uh, for cybersecurity, as we know that this is a very uh, like booming career. So we also keep courses for the professionals. So for Python, uh, we have given a live course uh, where uh, we are starting from the scratch and we are uh, like uh, making the students or making the professional to do a coding on both automation and web development and uh, even computer vision. So that course is starting at triple uh, nine, which is a live course, uh, which is around uh, like eight hours of live session. And similarly for cybersecurity, uh, we are keeping a live interactive session for like around uh, eight hours of uh, live session, which is going, uh, which will be happening with a price of 2,500, where you will start from the zero and you will be uh, like learning all the modules and all the concepts. And also uh, the cybersecurity essentials, which uh, Ibrahim have told you a uh, few minutes back that uh, it would help you, your organization or your family more safer on the cybersecurity uh, domain. So where you see like how you will protect yourself from the external threats or external malware and keep you uh, like safe and secure. And uh, similarly, we have a 
professional course which is like uh, tied up with the uh, uh, international standard so we have uh, tied up with ec council so we have the certified uh, like uh, authenticated partner so where uh, all like uh, like uh, five to eight uh, five to eight years of experience professional will be doing uh, with the uh, like uh, industry level course so that also we are we are providing as a live course and we are pricing it uh, 20000 for that it's a live course every month uh, you can uh, we'll have a batch and you can join on uh, whenever you are looking on to and uh, for students if you uh, ask about the students we have a specific track for them because uh, on uh, similar uh, things like Python, uh, we have a professional level and also a student level. So we have a special program for five days for the students as a coding for students where they will uh, like uh, love to code and they also do some amazing project uh, during the five days and it's a live course and it would be uh, mentored by our trainer. And it's, uh, uh, I mean, we have kept uh, the price range of 499 and we are doing these badges every month. So every month one live course batch will be going on. So no need to worry if you are willing to join later, you just inquiry, inquire uh, our team and you can just make a note of it. And similarly, uh, become a cyber hero is for uh, school students, uh, which will be uh, taken by uh, Brother Ibrahim. And uh, there are a lot of information being shared over there and also the student will love learning cybersecurity because uh, we are not teaching uh, only uh, the theoretical part. So most uh, around like 50% of the session would be uh, very fun and would be uh, a games kind of thing where children used to uh, love games, right? So it, it I mean, this course is entirely uh, like a design for the students and they will be becoming a pro on cybersecurity and so this course price is, it's a live course and this course price also it's 1250 and it's happening every month. So just take down this link, uh, uh, which is showing here. So it's, it, it will take you to the, uh, uh, I mean, uh, WhatsApp group. So where uh, you can uh, just uh, register yourself and uh, you will be uh, notified or you will be getting a call from our team once the course is started so every month we are having the courses so you just uh, you can also share this information to the needy people who are is looking for uh, the cyber security courses for their uh, children and uh, more specifically what is there for uh, the audience who are uh, joined today and uh, uh, being there in the webinar so we have a specific offer for you for uh, four different courses uh, we where, which uh, we have placed in our website. So you can just uh, note down this top offer, uh, and you can use this coupon code. To, you can just click this link and apply the offer, and you can uh, directly uh, uh, like uh, you can directly uh, um, enroll the courses. So uh, I, I will also just update the uh, website details over here. Um, so where you can go and browse uh, everything on the online. So uh, uh, final thing, uh, just note down this WhatsApp number. So I, I feel rather uh, joining the courses, you might be having more queries and more uh, details where you wanted to uh, just to inquire what is going on and what are the details is required and what are the information you need will be sorted out with this WhatsApp number. Yeah, just uh, make a note of it and uh, you can inquire us anytime. Uh, thank you all. And yeah, over to Brian. Yes. Uh, thanks, Salim, for that. Uh, I think that the whole idea of sharing this is to make sure that there are also structured program for the students, professionals, and also uh, who are working professionals as well, you know, or college students who are looking for a job. And that's the only way we can create awareness and create a, a workforce because there is more than 3.5 million uh, cybersecurity workforce gap uh, has been already identified. And with COVID hitting hard, one, one, one side people are losing job, other side there is an opportunity. And it is our duty to make sure that they're all benefiting from this kind of courses. And uh, I would like to end uh, this session um, by thanking all of you for attending this. Definitely we are going to share um, in the WhatsApp group, 
there will be a feedback form and also that will take you to download the certificate as well as you know send you will send all this information which you have talked about the course everything by email to the registered ids um maybe it's up you would like to say something before we end maybe it's up okay do you have any questions before i not just before and you want to ask anything i can see i think most of the questions you have asked you are talking about vpn yes you can install vpn in your system it's, it's, it will protect your ip identity that is there uh, then i i talked about malware and also uh, the parental kernel software if anything you require more you can put in the whatsapp chat box okay that's something which you can do um welcome venu shankar for your feedback thank you i hope you all benefited and the objective is to create awareness and if that is achieved i'm very happy uh, and uh, i think brother mohidin is unable to mute okay we will end this session uh, with your thanks uh, once again for all of you and i also thank uh, am team and all those coordinators who have come and made this program successful thank you very much assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh